Hello, Internet. Okay, so we're talking about hyzers, but first let's talk about not hyzers. So beginners start throwing on a pretty flat shoulder plane, right? They just do. I advocate this also because it simplifies things a lot. Just having everything up on this level makes it easier to understand the throw, get a power pocket, all that stuff. That starts to break down when you start trying to put push past 300 or 350. The reason is you can't get enough of a brace, right? If you're throwing on a flat shoulder plane, your hips are gonna be relatively flat too. Hips being flat doesn't leave a lot of room for getting down under your brace. <clears throat> so when beginners figure this out, they watch some online coaching, they watch coverage, realize that everyone coaches throwing on a hyzer plane, or they should, and that most pros throw the vast majority of their throws from a hyzer plane, even if they're getting a flat shot or an anti shot that's gonna drift right for a right-handed player, they're still tending to do that from a hyzer plane, if at all possible. It's if, if it's an extreme shot shape, then they'll come out and throw flat or leaning back, but they don't have to do that very often because they can flip something up, you know, 90 degrees and make it work. So what does a hyzer tilt look like in your hips? If I have my foot here pointed 90 degrees to my line of throw and I step forward to my offset plant and then I coil in to my rear leg. Now I'm on a hyzer. If I drop my front heel and spin through, I'm still on that same hyzer, but I flipped it. So that's, that's it right there. Keeping my shoulder plane on that same or a very similar plane, you know, so these two lines are parallel as I come through, that's gonna be the most efficient transfer of power from my hips to my shoulders because my spine is between those lines. Your spine gets all funky, everything else gets all funky. So that's why we want to throw from a hyzer if possible because there's more power available because our shoulder plane is matching our hip plane. So now that we know we want to throw on hyzer, how do we throw on hyzer? What'll happen if you try to start throwing on hyzer, ask me how I know this, uh, there's, there's two options. One, you're not gonna be able to get enough lean. That's me. Two, you're gonna get lean somehow, but then by the time you get to your hit and your follow through, you're going to have lost some lean. So option one is I couldn't lean over. I like physically couldn't do it. Like I can lean over, sure, but in the context of my throw, I would try to lean over comically far and say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lean over too far this time because I haven't been leaning over enough, so I'm gonna go too far and see what happens. So I'd lean over too far which was about here, film it, look back expecting to see this, and I'd see, you know, maybe 10 degrees of tilt. And I, that, I did that, filmed that like 10 times. I was like, what the heck? Why can't I lean over? I couldn't lean over because my brain knew that I was gonna fall. If I try to be in this position, even with an offset on my brace and throw explosively, there's nothing to stop me from toppling forward. <clears throat> so that was my problem is I couldn't even get on a high tilt. What a lot of people have problems with, I've seen this in form review, I've seen this in coaching, people that get, like trying to throw a standstill and you're here and it's a nice, you know, let's say 45 degree angle and you come through and you pop up and then you release on 15 degrees less hyzer angle. So if you started on a 45 and you end on what? A 30, that's 15 degrees of slop that is completely unacceptable when you're trying to hit golf lines. Like it's not gonna work. So what's gonna happen then is if I come back on a 45, end up popping up to a 30, and then I miss that shot, you know, three times in a row, I'm gonna say, okay, well I need more hyzer. So then I'm gonna go beyond a 45, and then maybe it'll come up to where I wanted, but I've, I've hopefully that makes sense. I've not corrected the problem, I've added a layer of abstraction that makes my throw more complicated. So don't do that. Just fix the problem, right? The problem is you're not balanced. 
So the easiest way to show this is if I'm throwing upright, this is my axis of rotation, right? Imagine it's in the middle of my body. If I'm throwing upright, everything's cool, I'm balanced. If I go to hyzer, note the axis is now sticking out there. I need a counterweight on that axis. Enter the rear leg. You didn't know what it does, now you do. All of a sudden, if I have this counterweight behind me, now I can throw explosively here and keep my balance, right? So that's, that's the whole thing. Like that's the secret of this video is that your rear leg has to be a counterweight and it has to stay on your axis of rotation during the rotation. So conceptually, hopefully we understand that now. How do we get there? So the easiest way to get a feel for this concept is three things all came together in my brain at the same time to figure this out. Scott Stoke, we figured it out before me because he's been around for a long time and he's way better than me. But he teaches this concept as a way to get to throwing efficient spike hyzers. So this is this has been out there. People know this. It just is under coached in the online coaching community, I think. So the way Stokely does it is he's just doing um, this is called T pose in yoga, where your hips are flat and you're on one foot and you're supposed to be here if you're doing yoga mode. Um, then if you go to here, this is half moon pose. So in half moon, my hips are stacked on top of each other. And if I explosively go from half moon pose to T pose, wow, that looks a lot like bracing, right? Because <laughs> it is, it's exactly the same motion. This rear leg being a counterweight and going behind and the rear hip dropping under the lead hip. So that's how Stokely teaches spike hyzers, right? You wouldn't necessarily throw a spike hyzer on a 90 degree angle, but he wants you to try that to get a feel for this rear leg really being a counterweight because you can get absolutely dead balanced here, drop your hip and throw a hyzer that goes literally 90 degrees up. So that's Stokely's thing and a little bit of yoga. Uh, Seabass also has a video about this. Let's say somewhat challenging to understand, but he's, he's talking about this, this axis to same idea. Um, the third thing is loop ghost one leg drills. That's an excellent part of a progression towards putting this rear leg counterweight into an actual functional throw. So what he's doing for his one legs, I'll link to the video because I think it's an excellent way to start getting a feel for a brace too. But he's, so now we're mixing a, a feel for a brace front leg with the counterweight and the momentum trap aspect of the rear leg. So he's setting up his one legs here. He wants weight in the heel. He wants your booty back a decent amount. He wants your body upright, not any weight here. But notice this foot is on the rear rail. It's not in line. So it's back here. Then when you go to throw or do a dry throw, you get that little lift up and then rotate this way. So the, the lift is where your leg would carry forward, right? Like this, if you were in a full throw. And then the swing around is the momentum trap part. So the momentum trap is the only thing in a standstill, one leg standstill, that's keeping you from toppling forward, right? Is storing that momentum in your rear leg. So check out his one leg video. It's excellent. It'll get you a feel for part of that. The next thing that'll get you actually moving this into a functional motion is Brian Earhart's two rails theory. So if you were going to initial step, X step, plant step, X step, plant step, X step, plant step as a drill, it would look like this. Front rail, back rail, front rail, back rail, front rail, back rail, with your center of gravity gliding in the center on a third rail the whole time. That is good. Center of gravity, moving linearly, good. What you don't want is any deviation of that center of gravity. So if I step onto this step, center of gravity shifts, step onto this step, center of gravity shifts. If I have this zigzag and wobble, it's not gonna work, right? We want front foot, center of gravity, back foot, three separate rails. That way, when you get to your plant, your center of gravity is in the middle, 
and your rear foot is in the back, if the braking is coming from that foot, the center of gravity is going to continue to shift forward and this foot is going to go behind. That's the whole point, right? We want that so that we can keep this line from head, or I guess from left shoulder to left leg. That's what allows you to stay on whatever hyzer angle you pick at your reach back, right? The leg has to counterweight. So that's the three rails concept. Um, Luke Ghost has a video where he, the one where he's swinging a bench around, right? Seems good. Having a lot of weight really lets you feel the shift into that front foot and the rear scooping behind. But in that video, he talks about thinking that the weight shift has to come offline on a 20 degree angle. I think that's wrong. Um, if you know how to get a hold of Luke Ghost, please get in touch with me. I would love to chat with him about this idea and see if he's shifted his thinking or if I'm misunderstanding something or what's going on. Um, I know he's on Disc Golf Course Review. I don't think he's very active right now. Um, if you can get a hold of him, let me know. Send him a link to this video. Um, what else? So, okay, the, the other question that people have about if we should be throwing from Heiser all the time, what's the end game? How do we get shots that go right? You can do the Drew Gibson answer and just flip everything up. Or there's actually a concept that I learned from watching my friends screw up. That if you get to your power pocket and then just let your elbow drop, the disc is gonna come out on hyzer. So you can use that intentionally from a hyzer lean. Just let your elbow drop off of the plane a little bit and the disc will come out flatter. So I'm working on that concept in my personal throw. I have proof of concept, it works. I'm not sure how much it affects your distance, but there are a lot of players that use that concept and it works. So that's the end game. Either just flip discs up and throw from a hyzer or work on weird off axis, dipping your elbow to get flat releases or even anhyzer releases out of a hyzer tilt. So that's all I got for now. Um, please ask questions if you have them. Um, I'll put links in the blah blah down below, including a link to my Patreon. I am now doing paid form reviews. So if you want me to take a look at your backhand, um, I would love to. And you can go sign up on the Patreon and we'll get you taken care of. All right, thanks so much for watching. Get out to the field.